Good morning, Otters. Hope you're all well on this lovely sunny Thursday. Um, so back to the book. Um, so Felix had gone to go and get food, hunt for some food, and had found the Jewish boy, the orphan, and he's just killed a Nazi soldier. So um, Felix has run quite sensibly. Then I realised that running was stupid. Soon the whole area will be full of troops looking for the kid who killed the Nazi soldier. There'll be dogs, trucks, maybe even planes. I stop running. I have a better idea. I'll hide in the one place they probably won't look. The river. I'm a fair way along the riverbank from the dead Nazi. I find a place where low branches dip into the water. I slide down the muddy bank under the leaves. This is a good hiding place. The water is up to my chin and the branches hide my head from view. Only two things worry me, apart from being found and killed. The water is very cold, and Jeannie's good shopping bag is very wet. The minutes tick by, lots of them. After a while, I can hear troops and trucks and dogs. I pass the time thinking about the kid. How could he do it? Shoot another person. I couldn't even kill a rabbit. He must be very strong and very determined. And very stupid. Doesn't he know that Nazis will do anything for revenge? Didn't he stop and think that he was putting every child for miles around in serious danger? Leopold could have told him. I think about Zelda sleeping peacefully and not even knowing that by tomorrow she could be on a Nazi revenge death list. A dead fish floats towards me, eyes dull in the moonlight. I won't let them get her, I say to the fish. The fish doesn't reply, but it doesn't need to. I know what I'm going to do. I wait until the trucks and the dogs have finally gone and I pull myself and the fish out of the water and start heading back to Genius. The sky is clear now. The air is cold. I move fast so I don't freeze. With the help of the moon and Rickmore Crompton and the distant engine sounds of trucks being parked, I manage to avoid the Hitler Youth Orphanage. I find the lane. I find Leopold's cabbage field. I'm feeling tired and exhausted, as well as cold and wet, but the sun will probably be up in a couple of hours, so I don't have any time to waste. I hurry into the barn. Genia doesn't bother keeping it locked now that Trotsky and the chickens are gone. Inside the barn, I put the fish down, take my wet clothes off, find a spade, and start digging. Wilhelm, what are you doing? You know how when you've been working on a hole for ages, and you've got used to only hearing the sound of the digging, chunk, 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 and suddenly somebody startles you and you nearly slice into your foot with a spade. That just happened to me. Wilhelm, says Genia sternly, what is going on? I look up. She's standing at the edge of the hole in her nightdress and coat. The early morning sun is milky through the open door behind her. Now I've stopped digging, I realise the hole is getting quite big. I'm standing in it and only my head is above ground level. Good. It's nearly deep enough. Come out of there, says Genia, frowning. I can see she's wondering why I'm naked. She reaches down and grabs my hand and hauls me up. Now that I'm standing next to her, even through my sweaty glasses, I can see what a mess I've made. Dirt is scattered all around the barn. Sorry, I say. I'll clean it up. Genia is staring at me with the expression people get when somebody has dug a hole in the floor of their barn and they don't understand why. It's for Zelda, I explain. I mean Violetta. An emergency hiding place, in case the Nazis come for her. I've made it big enough so she can lie down. We can put straw on the bottom and Leopold's kennel over the top. I stop talking to give Genia a chance to take it all in. She's looking at me as if she thinks I'm mad. And she won't think the hole is a crazy idea when I tell her about the killer raid in the river. But before I can, Genia speaks first. Wilhelm, she says softly, it's a very kind idea. Think about it. Can you honestly imagine Violetta staying still and quiet and hidden for more than two minutes? You know what a fidget she is. A chill runs through me, even though I'm hot and dripping with sweat. I hadn't thought of that. I'm not a fidget, says an indignant voice. I'm just lively. Don't you know anything? Zelda is standing in the doorway, rubbing her, eye, her eyes sleepily. She comes to the edge of the hole and looks down into it. It's too small, she says. Only one person can hide in there, not two of us. 
I hadn't thought about thought of that either. I forgot about me. My brain must be addled because I haven't slept all night. Zelda's face is a mixture of crossness and such loving concern that I want to hug her. I don't because I'm covered in sweat and mud. And Gina is staring at my pile of wet clothes and the fish and the things from the kitchen. She's looking like she might explode. Wilhelm, she says quietly. Have you been to the river? I nod. I can see from her face she's struggling to control herself. Probably because she doesn't know whether she should thank me for getting food or yell at me for getting her shopping bag wet. I confess everything. The rabbits, the Nazis fishing with grenades, Leopold's killer friend. When I've finished, Gina doesn't speak for a long time. Zelda does. I want Leopold's friend to teach me how to do it. She says quietly as she stares at Leopold's kennel. How to shoot a Nazi. Genia gives her a look. Zelda sticks out her bottom lip, stubborn and determined. The Nazis will take revenge for tonight, says Genia. People will die. But if you really did get away without being seen, Wilhelm, there's no reason any of us will suffer. I sag with relief. I did, I say. Good, says Genia. I want you to promise me you'll never do anything like that again. I think about how upset I felt when the kid shot the Nazi and how cold I was in the river and how worried I've been ever since. I promise, I say. Genia nods. I can see she believes me. If the Nazis come for revenge, says Zelda, I'll shoot them. Genia frowns. I think she's starting to see the problem we have with Zelda and Nazis. Then Genia and Zelda went out while I was sleeping and found some delicious herbs and made a fish stew. It's the best one I've ever tasted. The last one was about six years ago, but Mum only had caraway seeds for herbs, and I don't like the taste of them much. I could probably get to like them now, though. If Genia can get to like Jewish people, anything's possible. Would you like some more stew? says Genia. Yes, please, I say. There's nothing like a herb and stew... Bish, There's nothing like a herb and fish stew to stop you worrying about Nazi revenge attacks. For a while, anyway. Yes, please, thank you very much, says Zelda. Genia goes over to the stove, to the pot. Zelda is making a picture on the table with her fish bones. Little stick figures with fishbone arms and legs. They look happy. I wish Genia looked happy. She's been frowning and biting her lip ever since she got back with the herbs. I hope she's not having regrets about using all the fish in the stew instead of saving some. She could have preserved some of the fish with salt and stirred it in the wardrobe like I suggested. Preserving is a really good way of keeping food for winter. Mum used to do it with carrots. I bet in the future they invent lots of ways of preserving food. I bet by the year 1970 we'll be able to eat cherries in winter if we want, or lettuce. Genia gives a big sigh. On a second thought, I think she's worried about something more important than preserved fish. I think she's worried about Zelda, like me. I look at Zelda's fishbone figures again. Both of them have got fishbone smiles. I'm glad she's doing a happy picture. Is that your real mummy and daddy? I say to her. As usual, I'm hoping it is. The sooner she gives up this crazy idea that she's Jewish, the less likely she'll have to use the emergency hole in the barn. <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> your mummy and daddy look happy, I say to Zelda. I know why. It's because they've got you as their daughter and they love you very much. Love is like preserved carrot. It never goes off. Wilhelm's right, says Genia quietly. A person doesn't have to be here to love you. Zelda puts fishbone whiskers on the faces of her figures. They're rabbits, she says to me. They're happy because you didn't stab them. I sigh. I'm happy I didn't stab them. But I'd be happier if Zelda could forgive her parents. I glanced over at Genia. She's still at the stove. She's staring at the photo of her husband she keeps in a frame on the shelf. She's been staring at it a lot today. Suddenly I realise why she's unhappy. Of course. Here's me so worried about Zelda and forgetting Genia's got someone she cares about just as much. You must really miss him, I say to her. Genia looks at me with a guilty expression, like she didn't want me to see her staring at the photo. Yes, she says. Poor Genia. She hasn't seen her husband for two years. She must be missing him a huge amount. I had some news about him today, Genia says. I 
feel a jolt of concern. It couldn't have been good news, not with her looking so worried. Has something bad happened to him? I say, hoping I'm wrong. No, says Genia, nothing bad. I feel relieved, except why is she looking so miserable? Genia comes over with the stew pot and puts it on the table. She looks at me and Zelda as she slowly spoons more fish into her bowls. You know I told you how Gabriel was forced to go to Germany to work for the Nazis, she says. I nod. Zelda glares indignantly. Nazis shouldn't force people, she says. He's coming home, says Genia, probably in a few days. At first I'm happy for her, and for her husband. Hooray! yells Zelda, clapping her hands. But Genia isn't cheering or clapping. She isn't even smiling. I don't get it. Why, would a why wouldn't a person be happy that her husband is coming home? I can only think of two possible reasons. Either she doesn't like him anymore, or she's worried about what will happen when he gets here. So why might she be worried about what will happen when he gets there? So I hope you enjoyed the story for today. Um, I hope you have a fantastic day. Um, email me with your work or any other questions or anything else you've been up to. It's always lovely to hear from you. And um, I will check in with you again tomorrow. See you later, guys.